Hello, Frontless Podcast. Welcome to Drinks with MJ. Yeah, well, you are here. Thanks yeah, for having us. You're not drunk, but we're joking. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember yet. in the summer when I actually come on your podcast? Yeah. yeah. Can't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Took over oh. the show. <laughs> oh. Well, cheers. 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 It wouldn't be Drinks with MJ, otherwise, would it? Oh, I want to know, right? Cheers. How did you all meet? So, Josh and Trey, you can go first because you two knew each other from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, there's five months between me and Trey. And we're basically we're cousins, but we we grew up together basically, so like we're brothers, yeah. And then Tezza, um, as I said, I knew I knew of Tezza. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Tezza like in year nine because um, we went to like a university trip. Yeah, we went to a university yeah, trip yeah. where it was like different schools came together to like have a taste of what university would be. So we all interlinked with different schools, and then one of the schools was the school that Josh went to at the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, somehow I became famous amongst his. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I actually can't remember the ends of it, but I remember when they came back. Because I can't remember when it happened, but I know it was like the first half of the year. So, you know, like January, February, March. It was around that time. And then they come back and they tell me about this black guy called Tezza. I was thinking, wow, he's my man called Tezza. <laughs> and then they're just telling me. What was he then, doing? I don't know. See, yeah. I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> I don't get it. What it was is in his school, I don't know how, but there was one girl who fancied me. So instead of like letting the girl approach me, they all came together as like a school year. I was still thought, trying to imagine that and, as well. I yeah. thought like, yeah, when we have the disco on the last night, like we're going to get here with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I caught onto it early. And I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, why I, shut it down. <laughs> that's why I was like, yeah, I need to like stick with my school and the other schools because they're gonna try and like capture me in one corner with this girl yeah. <laughs> and push us together. But, Did you um, not like her? I didn't really fancy her and, and I came, I'm not gonna lie yeah, it sounds silly, but I actually came for the university experience. Oh. I actually did. <laughs> I was like 14, 15 at the time. And yeah. I was like, I think, when am I gonna go home and tell my mum and dad, yeah, by the way, I came back with a girlfriend or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> if that happened, that would be nuts. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, four years later, we became roommates. Yeah. 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 Living together. Yeah. But I, I met Trey like 10 years ago, so. How did you two meet 10 years ago? We used to work, work together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, that was an experience. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't <laughs> life mad the way like, you've all knew each other from like way back and then you're all, like, wor- you're all working together now? Yeah. Life yeah. works in like mad insane ways, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I it think does. that like people you know from years ago when you think you just don't think nothing of it and then they're like a massive part of your life and your story. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like when you get to a certain point in your life, um, I think anyone above the ages of like 21 in age, they're kind of the people that are going to stick around yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 as long as possible, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Where did Definitely. you come along with the Front Left podcast? Like, where was the idea? Oh, man. Josh has to tell the story because... I've told this story so, so many, many times. <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 I'm actually... Yeah. How are you for a podcast for something else? So, I was... Basically, I got an iPod. And, um, you know, when you could used to, like, jailbreak iPods and stuff? Oh, and yeah. I put stuff in iTunes. So I used to do that, but like, I used to put like, I was putting like, not line wire, but trying to get music onto my phone. And We've all been there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I started um, looking through. So I clicked on like this app and then there was like a library full of stuff. But instead of hearing music, they were talking. So you know when you used to download stuff on Landwire, like videos, it used to be completely different to what we used to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes so, yeah, yeah. And I used to think like, rah, did I actually download? And then started getting into it, it was podcasts. Oh yeah. And I was like, oh shit. So then fast forward, like, cause that was like about 2010, like nine, 10. That's when the iPod Touch come out. Fast forward like three years later when we get into uni, I was listening to podcasts and I was telling these guys about podcasts. And I was like, I want to do a podcast. Yeah. But back then, there weren't really that many UK podcasts. There were nah, random there ones. No. Yeah. So there were like um, a lot of stuff. BBC were, I'll be honest, BBC were one of the first ones to get onto podcasts. Because they, they used to cipher some of their shows yeah. and put it on podcasts. And then then that's how I came up with podca- podcasts. And then I think it was like six years down the line. When did we start the podcast? Uh, two and a bit, two and a bit years ago. Yeah, yeah, and then we was out of position then to be like, let's actually put this idea into into paper. Yeah, because the the initial plan was because we were traveling back from different cities. Yeah. Instead of doing like a podcast, we do like a show, but we yeah. do it whilst like 
when you're in know. between cities yeah. or on the road. Yeah. But then when we thought about like the logistics of like, you know, you can't be on the road and someone walks past, you can't tell them to be quiet, can you? No. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you're going from bus. place to place and it, like it might be windy or rainy or so, something along those lines. Yeah. So we thought, yeah, let's go with the podcast format. Mm. Would you say you were like confident when you were growing up? Oof. Oof. Um, for, well, for myself anyway, yeah. I was into like a lot of sports when I was yeah. younger, so I think that's where my confidence came. Um, as I grow growing older, as you get a bit older, mm. you stop doing sports and you you find what you are looking to you know branch into. Yeah. So I think my confidence maybe disappeared a little bit because mm. I wasn't doing what I thought I was going to eventually do. But yeah. doing the podcast, I feel like my confidence is coming back. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's what it does as well. It like builds your confidence, doesn't it? What yeah. about you, Tessa? Because you are. And you are out there, person, aren't you? You are. <laughs> See, I am, but I'm not at the same time. I think when I'm in certain situations, like when it comes to talking to people or being in a room with other people, it's very easy for me. But in my everyday, day to day, I'm probably a lot more like reserved and I'm a lot more like taking in what's going on. But when I'm like in a situation where like we're here in front of a camera and stuff, that's when it'll come out. Yeah. Or if I'm speaking about, like Trey said, I used to play sports as well. That's when it really comes out. But a lot of the time that's the only side people will see of you yeah. so they think you're always like yeah oh you're always live you're outgoing it's like no nah, most of the time i'm drunk i'm quiet <laughs> <laughs> i'm listening to everyone else but um yeah i'd say the confidence with the, with the podcast i think it's it's like helped us mm. and the confidence level is more natural whereas yeah. when we first started i think all three of us were we were a bit more tentative and a bit more like oh yeah i don't know we don't know how we'll be received so we don't know how much we can be ourselves yeah. but Mm-hmm. Yeah, now it's just, it's like natural, I'd say. That's so interesting. And what about yourself, Josh? Um, I, I think I'm a weird one, to be fair. I'm quite... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so, it's a weird one. <laughs> nah, so if you don't know me, I always say this, like, I'm a mix of confidence shy. So if you didn't if you, if you didn't know me, um, I'm very standoffish. I'm very wary of people. And I really, like, like to assess my surroundings, first of all. I'm quite confident in things that I know that I can excel at. So like stuff like this, it doesn't bother me. So I'll kind of be, I'll exert the confidence. But if you throw me in like other things, I don't think I'll be as, as confident. So it's a tricky one, but I think I've always kept the same personality as where I was when I was younger mm-hmm. to where I am now. So it hasn't really um, wavered. It's just how to project it, just different. Yeah. yeah, and that's so interesting as well. Like you all have different personalities, but it works. I want to know. Do you know when yous are coming to the edit, yous are talking about like a guest. Yeah. How who, how because there's three of yous. How would you decide? Like you know who has creative? Do you have more creative control than Josh? Or you know who has like the most? This is the guest. This is what we're doing. Or do you all do it equally? I think that's more me then. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and we kind of have an input of like what guests and that come in, but I feel like in. There's not, I would say, with the pod, there's no creative direction. Okay. It's like, we sit down and we just chat shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, wouldn't go, I wouldn't simplify it to that. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> that's the best way to say all the I think yeah. the great thing about the pod as well, and a lot of our guests, when they, when they come on, whether they're shy or, or they're yeah. not, having the little um, conversation beforehand, we really sort yeah. of ease them into it. Yeah. Um, I'm sort of one who I kind of sit back, I listen to the conversation and where I think I can maybe add points in, I will do. Um, again, Josh said that you know you, you may you may get the guests on and whatever, and I think what Tessa does great is you know mediate and yeah. move the conversation. Uh, if we've taken too long on a topic, you know, I think, <laughs> I think forward. What Trey said, Tessa's the best curator. I'm not, I'm not even gonna gas it. I'm not lying. Like, oh, thanks guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll, I'll be totally honest. If Tessa didn't know how to curate the pod, there's been aspects of like of points where I've now that I've looked back at the pod. And I was like, like, because we haven't done the pod in a while, it's taking good time to really look at like our strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Mm. And Tessa really does well at creating the pod. Am I saying it right? Curating. 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 And there was a time like when Tessa done, didn't do it, and there's times where I haven't been on it. And when I look back at them episodes, I always look like if Tessa wasn't there, there wouldn't be that direction. If, yeah. And if I wasn't there or if Trey wasn't there, yeah. there's certain aspects and attributes that we can bring in. So I feel like the pod without all three of us. It wouldn't have that identity. And you know, what do you think it is, Tessa, that makes it so special? Like the three of you come together. I think, I think, as you said, we we have different personalities, but there's parts of our personalities that are all similar. Yeah. Mm. So, like, depending on what guests we have or what conversation we have, we're almost like all on the same wavelength. 
without even speaking to that guest yeah. Yeah. and then when they speak to us things come out in the conversation yeah. but then there's certain other guests that we might have that we speak to where like Josh may have more of a like an input or more of a, yeah. a knowledge base than us two or Trey might have like a different perspective yeah. and it will take the podcast to a different way whereas like for me I can only go from what I know yeah, yeah. so it's because you've got three different like heads basically it can go in different directions whereas sometimes if it's just one person in front of it it's like that person needs to know so much to take it in a direction otherwise mm. it can go anywhere yeah. so I think we've three different people with different but similar at the same time yeah. can't really explain it it's like <laughs> no I know what you mean yeah. it just it just works sometimes yeah. doesn't it it's like if it just works and if, if it just feels right that's the best way of doing it yeah, because yeah, I do yeah. drinks with MJ I am drinks with MJ yeah. I just wanted to know what it's like actually working because I'd imagine what you are like it's like a group you know yeah, like yeah, a band yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like you all do your part and play your part and you yeah. all play it really really well Thanks. I noticed recently you guys were on TV oh, talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. our trends yeah. how was that? I, I loved it. Yeah? Loved it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, obviously I'm, I'm the only Liverpool fan here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I loved it. And how, how did you feel doing it? Well, at first, because um, I'm, like I said, I'm quite a reserved person anyway. So when I, I know we do a podcast and we're on, on camera, so I'm quite shy and stuff like that. But then when you're mic'd up and obviously sit, sit next to this guy as well, <laughs> <laughs> I sort of feel like, you know, I can sort of raise, raise my levels up. Yeah. And, you know, just speaking about Liverpool, um, somebody again from our, our, our city, a uh, positive role model. Um, you know, growing up, I would say maybe the role models that I would see would be maybe outside of the city, mm. or maybe like a look towards America or other sorts of sports. But having somebody who is, you know, in, in, our, in our city, like, like Trent, doing what he's doing for a local successful club, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah really, really, really amazing. I think it came, it came together quite quickly. Because like yeah. I was asked to do it, or well, I was the point of contact because I had previously worked or seen whoever was interviewing us a few days prior. So then she'd message me and was like, "Oh, we're doing this special with you and well, it was meant to be all three of us, but Josh just couldn't make it on the day." But she was like, "Oh, would you fancy doing the interview?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll ask, I'll ask the you know the other guys, but if not, like one of us will do it definitely." And um, yeah, we were faffing around trying to find like a, a location because everywhere we went to was, was busy and we had like a two day turnaround. So I think when we came to record it, it was quite easy because it was like really relaxed and there was only like four or five people. Yeah. Whereas sometimes when you do those kind of interviews, there's so many other people. And it's a wing and a pair, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Whereas that was really like calm and and Gunan who was like um, filming us and, and asking us the questions, like we'd met her before. So it was really like, easy to bounce yeah. off so mm, that's really it. good it's fabulous what about yourselves where do you see yourselves in 10 years um you know like the podcast it's it at first it, it was something that we wanted to do and then i didn't see it as like a job i seen it as like something that i, I really really enjoy uh, similar to josh i would like to sort of then sort of like be behind the scenes sort yeah. of thing um, but again, using this for sort of more opportunities what other doors can this can this lead to it's like music though isn't it because you need to think about it. An artist doesn't really like have longevity for like 20, 20, it, everything has to change with the times. Think about the restaurants as well. The same kind of restaurants, they say like an average restaurant has like maybe five to 10 years yeah. before it closes down. It's if it's all about like reinventing yourself. Yeah. But then how much can a person reinvent themselves to a younger generation without losing their identity? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. That's a good one. I, to be honest, I would've said go behind the scenes as well. I think for me, it's, maybe a little bit different because I feel like I might end up going towards the media route, yeah. but it may not be with front left per se. It might just be if there's opportunities for me to do. Yeah. But like what Josh said at the beginning, it, like you don't want to go down the TV route too much. There's nothing wrong with being on TV. I've been on TV and other stuff. But like you don't want to go down that route where it's you don't have control of the content yeah. that you're putting out mm -hmm. and you're almost like, a puppet in what they want and you're yeah. the star where and then the, that the time where you're like i don't want to do that you're already tied into it mm. and you lose your identity you can yeah. and your yeah, authenticity yeah, yeah. and stuff like that how do you guys feel and i'll be honest about like trolling and comments online like negative comments online like how, how would you react to that to be fair we never really got any so i can't really tell you how to me personally i've i would 
We've never, we've never actually got any, so I can't really not tell from, you. Not, yeah, not, from, not from front, front left. left. Not, not yeah. really from front left. I think maybe maybe one drunk night or whatever. I was like out and, and you know, when you have a couple of drinks, you get a bit loud. Of and course. Stuff like that. Was <laughs> someone come up to you? No, 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 no. They didn't come up to me, but they heard me speak and obviously I'm Scouse, innit? But I don't think they'd ever seen like a black Scouse before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they were like, speak again. And I was just like, I can't remember exactly what I said. You're like, oh my god, this guy's in the front of bringing everybody over. <laughs> so, maybe it's a show. Know, still kind of like a novelty, I think, mm. um, to the wider society, yeah. I would say. But um, no, I've, I've not really had any negative things about the podcast. Yeah. I would tell you one thing, though. When we first started doing the pod, I, because I've, I've got a gaff because you can't, it's my identity, but I was proper insecure. I've never been insecure about my gaff, but I was proper insecure that people would be like, oh, it's gaff. Do you get what I'm saying? Of like, course. So that was one thing that I was like, oh shit, like, are people going to be like, oh. That's it, and like, I'm at a point now, I don't know about you, but this is who I am. Mm. Take it or leave it. Yeah. Cheers, you drinks with MJ. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Down in one. Down in one. Oh, I'm not running on one. Ah, I'm finished. Yeah. 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 Yeah.